Speaking of which, let's actually go over this really, well, this reporting that validates what we already knew if you were following what was happening. This past fall, there was a coup in Bolivia, which removed Evo Morales from power. Evo had governed Bolivia for a couple of terms. He was uh, very effective as president. He lifted millions of people out of poverty. Uh, were there criticisms, were there mistakes? Kind of like definitionally, yes, he was a president. Um, and the big piece of evidence that people marshaled to try to make the case that he was some type of dictator, which is ludicrous, it's absolutely not a dictator. Okay, that that is a that is a very strong charge without any evidence. Was that he got the constitution amended so he could run for another term, and uh, the courts ruled in his favor. Uh, although I believe the referendum rejected that. I believe by a narrow margin, people didn't want to give him another term. Now, again, Mike Bloomberg pushing through a third term in the New York City Council. Is that a, is that a bit autocratic? Yeah, it is. Was it maybe a bit autocratic for Morales to do that? Sure, maybe. Uh, it does not make him a dictator. And of course, unlike Bloomberg, he was not the agent of the oligarch class. He was an agent of the poor and indigenous people of whom he did an enormous amount as president of Bolivia. Which is an important factor when considering it these things, I think. The what? factor. Yeah. It is the factor. He was going up against institutional interest to try to preserve enormous strides that he had delivered for people. Again, much bigger, you know, there's critiques from the left and blah, blah, blah. But the case in all of these places, Venezuela, Nicaragua, anywhere, the people who, have, the only people who have any credible critiques of the governing parties oppose all U.S. intervention and coup mongering against them. So be very clear about that. And there was a huge AstroTurf campaign, including attempts to blame the Amazon fires that originated under the Bolsonaro government on Morales. It was aggressive, it was active, and you see similar attempts actually right now against AMLO in Mexico. And I have no doubt that these are US orchestrated and backed. But the other main thing that happened was a vote count question. And we said at the time, because we read an analysis from Guillermo Long and Mark Weisbrod, it was really obvious. Basically, the candidate, the leading candidate needs to win by a margin of 10 points in order to he not have a runoff. The first uh, reported votes came out showed Morales with a several point lead, not a double digit lead. So even in this scenario, to be really clear, he was still, there's no scenario, including even the most ardent and pro-coup scenarios that Morales was not receiving more votes than his closest competition, just to be very clear. The votes were stopped and the government actually declared victory. Now, the, what they said and what has been vindicated was actually in the same way that like, well, you know, eight precincts are reporting for Bernie, but we actually can see that by this margin, he's going to win Nevada. So basically what had been reported and the margin that Morales had showed a trend that was going to get replicated because basically the parts of the country that hadn't been reported yet were key parts of his base. So he was inevitable. He was going to hit that target. The OAS acting as an agent of the United States. The Office of American States. Office a, of American States. As a DC uh, address. As a, I'll, I'll quote now from a piece that just was published in the very anti-US regime change effort, Washington Post. Bolivia dismissed its October elections as fraudulent. Our research found no reason to suspect fraud. A quick recap. And I'm quoting now from uh, John Curiel and Jack R. Williams. A quick recap. Uh, Morales claimed victory in October's election, but the opposition protested about what it called electoral fraud. On November 10th, a report from the Organization of American States, OAS, noted election irregularities, which leads, which, quote, leads the technical audit team to question the integrity of the results of the election on October 20th. Police then joined the protests and Morales sought asylum in Mexico. The military installed government charged Morales with sedition and terrorism. 
A European Union reporting noted, uh, report noted that 40 former electoral officials have been res- arrested and were facing criminal charges of sedition and subversion, and 35 people had died in post-electoral conflict. Because There's also uh, right-wing power military squads terrorizing Morales supporters, uh, burning indigenous people's flags. The installed coup leader marched with a massive oversized Bible to the presidential palace, Massed soldiers went into the Bolivian parliament. The highest polling presidential candidate, a member of Morales' Mass Party Movement for Socialism, has received the summons from prosecutors for undisclosed crimes. And this is for the current upcoming elections and an obvious effort, like with lawfare in Brazil, to keep the left off of the ballot. The media has largely reported the allegations of fraud as fact, and many commentators have justified the coup as response to electoral fraud by uh, mass and IP by the Hamas party. However, as specialists in election integrity, we find that the statistical evidence does not support the claim of fraud in Bolivia's October election. And it goes on to sort of, you know, uh, I'll, I'm going to try to sort of figure out how to uh, how to condense this a bit, but basically, it recap it restates what again what we said contemporaneously, what all of the research uh, of objective reporters said. But I'll just go over this one part. The preliminary count halted with eighty percent, eighty four percent of the vote counted when Morales had a seven point eight seven percentage point lead. Though the halt was consistent with election officers' earlier promise to count at least 80%, so they went 4% over, of the preliminary vote in election night and continued through the official count, the OAS quickly expressed concerns over the stop. When the preliminary count was resumed, Morales' margin was above the 10% threshold. The OAS claimed that the preliminary count resulted in a, quote, highly unlikely trend in favor of the MAS IPCP when the count resumed. The OAS reported, quote, unquote, deep concern and surprise at the drastic hard-to-explain trends in the preliminary uh, results. Now, 84% reported a 7% lead. Is that really so shocking it would get to 10%? And notice all of the language. It's all deep concern, surprising trend. There's no math here. There's nothing. It's all just English major shit. Yeah. This is why the CIA recruits from Ivy Leagues. This is why the CIA recruits from Ivy Leagues. This is why modern CIA coups are really like, they're just like selling Nikes. I mean, the military can still be brought in, but the OAS could just as easily say, here, we're going to give you the pretense. Now, all the military fascist paramilitary forces and all of the big agribusinesses and Brazil, now you can come in with your money and your death squads to finish this coup. And then it goes on to say, but the statistical uh, analysis behind this claim is problematic. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll just actually say the, that you should read this piece in the, uh, in the Washington Post itself. I can't go over all of it because it would get us bogged down too much. But you see, like, the big takeaways there, right? 84% reported, 7-point lead, goes to 10 when all are reported. The OAS does not wait. There is no irregularity in the process. The officials said we're going to give you 80 percent on election night. They gave 84 percent of the vote. And there's zero indication in any part of the process that Morales did not win this election. And of course, Morales, you know, this is no surprise to anybody. Whatever his mistakes and people's sort of fatigue with it, with an incumbent, he lifted several million Bolivians out of poverty. The average height of Bolivians has increased under his leadership. Um And even though he was willing, and there's very similar dynamics in all of these pink tide places that the U.S. has interfered with, but he was not even rejecting outside investment in vital areas like lithium or natural gas. He was just saying, we're going to have arrangements where there's local cuts. The government's going to get some of this. And that's how we're going to spend on social programs, because you're not going to just extract, destroy our environment and indigenous communities and give nothing, which is the standard U.S. relationship with these places. Right. Now, this is what Yasha Monk, the very, very, very important, very serious commentator who opposes authoritarianism. This is what he tweeted at the time. No. 
And by, and to be clear, Evo didn't like resign. He didn't say like, all right, people aren't happy. He fled in the middle of the night to get on a plane <laughs> to Mexico because these people were going to murder him uh, and put him up uh, on fraudulent charges because it was a military junta government. This is what Yasha Monk said. No, Ava Morales' resignation was not a coup. It was one of the few big democracy, big victories democracy has won in recent years. Both leftist dictators like Venezuela's Maduro and far-right populists like Hungary's Orban should be terrified by it. Well, I could guarantee you Orban, to the extent he was aware, was thrilled by it because he's on the Obviously. opposite side ideologically, you fucking moron. Idiot. And it, it, just breathtakingly stupid comment right there. And this coup was no doubt backed by the Trump administration, who's his ideological ally. I'll say once again, you fucking moron. And uh, the Venezuelans are going to be, yeah, of course they're going to be concerned. And they're going to double down on their strategy to protect themselves. Also, and let, yeah. We have some more tweets unless you want to. I just want to say really, I just, as with all of these places, at some, there are correct we need to be able to have some objective assessment in longer forums about the internal failings of these governments and their own mistakes they've made. But Venezuela, number one, I don't take as a, an assumption, uh, you know, I don't take for granted that there's been fraudulent elections in Venezuela at all. That's an assertion that I have not seen. It seems of. like the one we just investigated looked to be not fraudulent. Oh, so this I mean, one is a hundred percent right. We know right. The it's one that, that yeah. they we know the record on. is that they're lying about Bolivia. So they've they always say this about Venezuela. We don't know. Then we know with Venezuela that to the extent that this government has been able to protect itself from constant efforts at a U.S. coup, and the public recognition by Donald Trump and Nancy Pelosi of some random guy that claims he's president and has been begging outside forces in the United States and Colombia and Brazil to wage a coup. Yeah, there is a lesson there for Venezuela, which is thank God we cut a deal with our military and you haven't been yeah. able to do this to us, which then will get recycled into sanctimonious bullshit in the United States. Like, no, oh, there's really the military. They're with the military. That's not good. That's not democratic. What they should do is alienate their military and then we can go and have a coup and then they can have a proper military dictatorship. The same shit behind the Castro discourse. It's the same shit behind the Castro discourse. And I do not, and I make it different. I, I Look, if you have a good faith, person, particularly from a country, and you've had bad experiences with the government, I don't take that away from you, and that's a valid perspective. But the sanctimony and moralism, Lula and Morales, okay, particularly Lula, but absolutely Morales, play by the rules, uh, classic coup in Bolivia, judicial coup in Brazil. Castro, Nicaragua, and Venezuela survive. Why? Better start to be able to get real about that. All right, let's do some more. A few tweets. more tweets. This one yeah. I think is from earlier, but uh, Yasha, pay attention to the awful events unfolding in Bolivia. Evo Morales likely falsified. <laughs> when is Yasha gonna? He hasn't tweeted again. He hasn't tweeted about this since November. Likely doing a lot of work there. Uh, the electronic count suddenly stopped, which again, the Washington Post we just, just explained. Yeah, explained. Could have looked into this. At and the, gave, again, at the time, this is not new information. Yeah, and uh, and so Yasha again instead today he's just tweeting about how Bernie's gonna lose in the general. We have Claire Jeffrey of Mother Jones, dicey times in Bolivia. Morales had taken several end runs around a democratic <laughs> process, but let's hope it is a democratic process that succeeds. Him. Well, Claire, how did that work out? Yeah. And then Thanks, the Claire. Economist, which I must admit, like 15 or 10 years ago, I used to think like, I'm going to subscribe to that and be smart. Um, <laughs> Ava Morales' resignation did. prompted a chorus of denunciations of a coup, but this time at least the critics are wrong. Well, <laughs> maybe they weren't wrong. Maybe people should go uh, re retroactively invest some credibility into those critics. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, yes. I honestly like <laughs> that. Just look, if you if you if you are not willing to see the absolute obvious of something like that, then honestly, just keep your mouth shut. That's like really what's best.